and welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today I'm going to do part two of my MRI basics. Previously you've seen my video hopefully already on nuclear spin and net spin. And if you haven't, I would encourage you to do so. Part two, we're going to look specifically at the effect of an external magnetic field on those spinning protons. And in particular, we're going to look at alignment and precession. So here we have a picture of a MRI machine. And an MRI machine basically is one very large electromagnet. And these things are usually on full time. So this is a gantry and the patient lies inside there. And this is basically one giant coil that is cooled usually by liquid helium. And it produces a very strong magnetic field in the order of around one to three Tesla. So it's a very strong magnetic field. The patient lies on this bed over here and they have to lie particularly still. So they have this cage around their head to keep them perfectly still. And then they go into this large gantry. What does that do to the hydrogen atoms? So just a quick reminder, of course, this represents our hydrogen atom, which in essence is just a proton. And as you know, that spins and produces a magnetic moment. And in this case, the magnetic moment is pointing upwards. Now you have lots of them. And as a result of them all having magnetic moments, if you are basically walking around, those particular hydrogen atoms all have their magnetic moment in a random direction. So the net result, of course, is that all of them are pointing in various random directions. And so therefore, because they're not aligned in any way, you don't walk around acting like a one big giant magnet. Now, for simplicity's sake, though, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the balls that represent the protons and just look at their magnetic moments. So here are the same magnetic moments that of the hydrogen atoms, but we just removed the actual protons. And so we're just looking at the magnetic moments now. As you can see, they're randomly aligned. They're in all different directions. But what happens when you are placed in the gantry of an MRI machine? So what happens when we turn on this magnetic field? Well, there you can see what happens is they align. And they align in one of two ways. And if you look very carefully, many of them align in the same direction as the magnetic field. And so these guys over here, we refer to as aligning parallel. But a number of them, as you notice, align in the opposite direction. These are anti-parallel. And so there is going to be a difference in the number of parallel to anti-parallel. And in fact, the difference is actually determined by the magnetic field. So for example, the, there is going to be very similar numbers of parallel to anti-parallel if we're only at, let's say, 0.5 Tesla. But the difference increases as we start to increase the magnetic field. So when we go to three Tesla, then the difference in the number of parallel and anti-parallel increases. And what that means is, is that you get a net magnetic moment or a net magnetic vector. So to give you an understanding, let's say I take one parallel and one anti-parallel. For every parallel and anti-parallel that comes up, you get a net of zero. But if I end up having more parallel than anti-parallel, then the greater the difference, of course, what you're going to get is you're going to get a smaller number of anti-parallel. And so as a result, that's going to produce a net magnetic effect. So in essence, what is happening is when you are placed in an MRI machine, the first thing that happens is your protons or your hydrogen atoms align parallel or anti-parallel. And because there are more parallel than anti-parallel, you will have a net vector of going upwards. But there is a second thing that occurs. These protons don't align perfectly. They actually wobble. And we call that wobble precession. And to explain precession, I want to demonstrate it using a simple toy. Before I go and show you how precession works in an MRI, I want to demonstrate precession for you. So in front of me, I have a small toy that is actually a gyroscope. And it has a disc here that spins really fast. And I make that spin by actually threading this uh, loop into it and making it spin. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest this spinning device on top of this particular pivot point here. So let's have a look. So as I pull this, this is going to spin extremely fast, but I want to show you what happens as well. Notice that the object is spinning really fast, but the axis of rotation is also spinning. That is precession. The change in orientation of an axis of a spinning object. Now this works because in this case it's torque induced we call it, and in this case it's because of gravity is applying a torque on the axis. Now if I grab it and lean it over a little bit further, it will still rotate. Now of course the slower the object spins, that's going to affect the actual precession that's going on. So here we have basically four magnetic moments of a wobbling hydrogen atom. And as you can see, they are all process precessing. And as I explained to you just before, that these represent the magnetic moment of your hydrogen atom as it precesses around a common axis. Now the thing is though, is that the sum total of these will add up as well. So here represents basically these four vectors added up. So in other words, we have these particular precessions going on, but because they are out of phase, they're actually precessing at a different stage in their rotation, the sum total is the fact that they will all add up to a vertical axis. So although we already have established that there is a net total pointing upwards in the direction of the magnetic field, even though that they wobble, even though that they precess, because they all precess at different phases, there are different stages of their frequency, then what's going to happen is it's going to have a net result of upward. Now, of course, that is true for the anti-parallel as well. They also have the same effects going down. But as I told you, there are more parallel than anti-parallel. So this value is smaller. So therefore, what you're going to get is a total net result of a vertical in the upward direction. Now, what happens though, when we hit all of this with a radio pulse? Well, stay tuned. That will be part three. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.